Hi, thanks for joining me today. My name is Brian Peterson and I'm with Clemson University and I work in the Park Solutions Lab with the Department of Parks, Recreation and Tourism Management. And this is a three video series about tools for determining outdoor recreationist spatiotemporal behavior in a variety of settings. And I'm gonna talk first about what spatiotemporal, what that term means. And then I'm gonna get into four different data collection tools and then eight different analysis tools and then we're gonna draw some conclusions. So spatiotemporal behavior, what does that mean? That's a big word, spatiotemporal. And it is composed of the spatial component and the temporal component and a geographer out of Sweden named Hagerstrand uh, formulated what was called time geography in which he elaborated on um, the fact that space is inherently linked to time and what this means socially for humans and so if you think about it humans on earth no matter where we're at we're occupying a space and time is clicking away so space and time are inherently linked and so this brings together an omnipresent tripartite relationship between space time and people Again, omnipresent because the space and time is always present. And just to make sure that we all are understanding each other, the definition of space that I'm using is a container, and the definition of time that I'm using is a linear measurable construct. And that spatial component, it's composed of three different dimensions, latitude, longitude, and elevation. And the temporal component is composed of one construct, linear Time. So spatial temporal is actually composed of four dimensions, three spatial dimensions and one temporal dimensions. And so just as all human activities have a location and a timestamp, so does GPS data. And GPS data for location, that's typically a waypoint and an associated timestamp. So a latitude, a longitude, and at what time that point was recorded. So before I get into the data collection tools, I just wanted to make sure we all understand what I mean by uh, tools when I'm saying tools. And so in terms of spatiotemporal processes, tools are anything that automate those spatiotemporal processes, including data collection tools and analysis tool. And here in the palm of this hand, here of this figure, you see a GPS data logger. And note how um, I like to call it a GPS data logger instead of a GPS data tracker or GPS tracker, um, just out of being a little bit sensitive towards recording where people are going, uh, GPS data logger, from when I've passed them out to research participants, it goes over a little bit better by calling it, hey, do you want to carry a GPS data logger versus, hey, do you want to carry a GPS tracker? So see what this GPS data logger in the figure, that is made by a company called Canmore, and the model is a GT740FL. And some of the, uh, reasons that it's a good GPS data logger is that it's small, so research participants do not need to carry a big GPS data logger. Uh, it's waterproof, it's relatively affordable, and it doesn't have a touchscreen LCD uh, screen in which research participants could accidentally tamper with the device when it's in their pocket. So the four GP, uh, data collection tools I want to talk about today are GPS data loggers, Public Participation GIS, PPGIS, and GIS stands for Geographic Information Systems, and that's a tool set used to analyze uh, multiple layers of geographic information and where you can manipulate them and analyze them and come up with all, cool, all kinds of cool findings. The next data collection tool is VGIS, which stands for Volunteer Geographic Information Systems, and then lastly, uh, Mobile Phone Data. And in this table here that you see on this slide, is an example of raw GPS data. And you'll see for column A, you have a unique participant ID. In column B, you'll see that there is a point ID for each waypoint. And then you have a date, and then you have a time in column D. And you notice the times are in 15 second increments. And this data was uh, taken from GPS data loggers. And you can configure those GPS data loggers to record waypoints uh, whenever you want, every five seconds, every 10 seconds, every 15 seconds, so you can choose that interval. And a lot of the research shows that for tracking uh, recreationists while they're walking around a park or protected area, it's best to have it at 15 seconds. Now, if they're driving, going a little bit faster, you might want to use a 10 second interval or a five second interval. 
Um, continuing on with this table here, you'll notice also you have the latitude, longitude, and elevation, which is the spatial component. So with each waypoint, you have a timestamp. So GPS data loggers. The purpose of them is efficient collection of waypoints and timestamp data, high spatial accuracy and temporal resolution. The limitations is that they are intrusive and typically need to be prepped for upload to GIS software. And what I mean by intrusive is that a research participant needs to carry this around while they are in that park or protected area. And sometimes when a research participant knows that they're being tracked, they might um, do some funny spatial behaviors like run in circles or stuff like that. And so um, it seems to be a little bit uh, less intrusive if it's a smaller device that easily fits into their pocket. Now, one of the things I want to bring up with this slide here is when you're analyzing and uh, getting ready to answer your research questions, you want to think about what spatial scale or spatial scales and what temporal scale or temporal scales is best to answer your research question. And so one of the things that's great about GPS data loggers is they record data at a very localized level, exact waypoints of where people go. And these waypoints can be connected together to form lines in GIS software, such as ArcGIS. Um, later on, one of the data collection uh, tools I'm going to discuss, PPGIS, is uses a spatial scale that's more at a macro level, more of a landscape area. So this brings me to the conclusion of the first video of this three set video, uh, three series video titled Tools for Determining Outdoor Recreationist Spatio Temporal Behavior in a Variety of Settings. And I hope that you have learned something thus far and that you will join me for video two. Thank you.